Hey, hey, Jess here from Jessie on a Journey, coming to you live from the Galapagos Islands inside of my cabin aboard the MY Passion. So this trip was really, really tough for me to figure out what to pack because it's the Galapagos Islands, in my head it's going to be really hot, but on the weather.com channel it was saying 68 to 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, there's so many activities you're doing, snorkeling, hiking, hang rides. Then on top of that, it's also a very nice ship. So, you know, there's dinners and there's a hot tub. So I was sort of thinking like, okay, should I pack shorts? Should I pack pants? Should I pack nice clothes for dinner? And I've learned a lot now doing the five day cruise. And I realized that I actually overpacked. I really could have kept this a lot simpler. So I've laid out everything that I packed and I'm going to kind of go through it. In the description of this video, I'm also going to link a packing list that you can just download to show you what you should pack for a trip to the Galapagos in October. So here's the thing with the Galapagos. It is a bit chilly, but the sun is also really, really strong. So you are going to want to think about wearing layers. So let me just show you a bit of what I packed. First of all, you're, you're going to want to check with your ship to see what is included. But I thought I was going to potentially starve. And the fact is that you get three very big meals a day. Plus, on our ship, we also get canopies after we come back from our afternoon activity. And you're not allowed to bring snacks onto the islands anyway. So these were really useless and there's always snacks out actually on our ship. So didn't need this. You'll definitely want at least two bathing suits. You're going to be in the water a lot. Actually, quick little story. We just went snorkeling and saw sea lions, sharks, and penguins. So you're definitely going to want to get in the water as much as possible. Don't really worry about wearing a cute swimsuit especially in October, you're going to have a wetsuit on. So if you're a blogger or Instagrammer like me, maybe you want to pack one cute swimsuit. Maybe you'll take a few shots on the top deck with the hot tub. Okay, so maybe you pack one cute one, but you really don't need to worry about that too much because really we've all been in a wetsuit pretty much the whole time. Reusable water bottle for sure. I mean, the Galapagos Islands is all about sustainability. So, you know, don't bring a plastic bottle, bring a reusable water bottle. And I think probably all the ships, at least ours, always have drinking water that they can refill your bottle with. Really good sun glasses. These are actually my fiance's. I brought cheap ones and it's driving me crazy. I wish I would have brought better ones. So definitely protect your eyes. And I put this hair tie here because you're going to be kayaking, hiking, snorkeling. You're going to want to bring a bunch of these. I've already lost a few and down to my last one so wish I had brought a couple more a few things that I didn't really need I brought this kimono <laughs> thinking it would be really cute for pictures laying out on the top deck um, going snorkeling in but like I said you're gonna be in the wetsuit the whole time and this trip is so jam-packed with activities that we've gone on the in the hot tub once for like 20 minutes and pretty much everyone has gone to bed around 9 p.m. because you're just go, 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 go. And you don't want to miss anything. You don't want to miss the chance to see the blue fitted boobies or the sea lions or the tortoises. And the, the truth is, going back to the blogging and Instagram packing, you know, usually you'll bring some cute clothes for photos like that. In the vlog goes, like, you're not the star of the show. The, the sea lions and all the animals are, you're going to get great photos for your feed, even if you're not in every photo. So don't worry too much about that. I brought these light pants, you're definitely going to want to have some kind of, I always bring these old light pants that I can hike in even in the summer. They're very light. Probably a better option. These are just my old sorority pants, but um, if you have some kind of windproof light pants or even the pants that um, you can break away the bottom, because again, the sun is really strong. So, you know, it's quite hot and you're going to want to protect your skin, but it also gets very, very windy. So a pair of windproof pants and also some kind of jacket for the wind. This is a nice and light one. And I'll put some links in the description too to some of these items and the brands that I like. You'll want definitely a windproof jacket, but nothing too, too heavy so that you can also hike in it and be outside. I wish I would have went with a few more warm things. 
and long sleeve things versus thinking about like, cute shorts and cute tops. We've been so active, thinking about looking cute and presentable hasn't really been the main focus, I think, for most people on this trip. I'm obsessed with this shirt. It's actually I'll show you by Crab Hoppers. Super light. It's something I always throw on when it's really, really sunny and I want to protect my skin or after snorkeling. You can wear it when it's really warm and it, it's very breathable. This shirt I actually haven't worn yet, but I think it was good to bring just in case. It's uh, one of those moisture wicking shirts, just in case it gets really, really chilly. Actually, last night we all ate outside, despite it being pretty chilly, just because the crew made a delicious barbecue dinner and we all wanted to sit under the stars. So in October, it's not a bad idea to bring something like this. I'm not gonna show you all my underwear, but you know, sports bras, bring a few of those, and regular underwear bras and things like that. These, you know, little tank tops that you can hike in or put under clothing. I think these are great. I brought a little too many, but you are doing activities in the morning and the afternoon. Something to note that I was confused about is you come back to the ship very frequently. There is no, like I said, no food and drink allowed aside for water on the islands and there's no bathrooms. So they pretty much, you know, will take you on a hike, bring you back to the ship for a little bit. Then you'll go snorkeling, you'll come back for lunch. Then maybe you'll do another hike or a kayak or something like that. So you're constantly coming back and you can change and kind of reorganize yourself. Having, I think this was invaluable. I wore these a lot. Sweatpants. I like these because they also look like slacks. You could dress them up. I've done it. A few times, you know, it was chilly. It's nice on this boat. The boat's all carpeted. You actually feel like you're in someone's home. Uh, it's nice to throw these on. And actually, a few times when we were sailing, um, they threw on a BBC movie about the Galapagos. Actually, after this, we're going to hear a talk on sustainability in the Galapagos. So it's nice to have some sweatpants and maybe a sweatshirt to throw on. The boat's air-conditioned, so just to make sure you're nice and cozy. You can sleep in it, too, if you like the room cold. I also brought a pair of pajamas. Just to show you quick, just shorts and a t-shirt. I think it's just nice to have some comfy clothes on a cruise like this because it does feel like someone's home. Um, dinner. Some people dress up, some people don't. You really don't have to. I brought these two cute tops and a pair of leggings for dinner. I haven't worn them. <laughs> but if you want to bring one or two cute shirts to dress up for dinner, uh, that's totally up to you. Everyone on the trip has kind of done whatever they feel. And you do not need to bring any special shoes for dinners as there's no shoes allowed on the boat. So sneakers or hiking shoes and then some kind of sandal or water shoe for any wet landings where you're going to an island but you are having to hop in the water. That's all you need. I brought a pair of cute sandals for dinners because I thought maybe they, we would have to dress up. Haven't used them. So you'll be barefoot or in sacks. So bring some comfy sacks for the boat. I also packed, I'm wearing one, five sundresses, not really needed. I was picturing that between the morning activities and the afternoon activities that I would be, you know, laying out or walking around the boat. Um, there's, there's not that much downtime. You have lunch, then maybe you, you have a half hour, maybe an hour. You can kind of just throw on your clothes for the next activity. But I do find having one or two has been nice. For me, I'm recording all these different videos for my blog. So for me, having a few sundresses is nice just for pictures and videos. But if you're not doing that, I don't think it's super necessary. You can pick whether you want to maybe have two nice shirts and maybe two or three sundresses for dinner and then bring a sweater like this just to put over it. And then you can have something that maybe you could wear for a panga ride, like you could wear this in the small boat that they take you around on, they call it a panga. You kind of sightsee and bird watch. You could wear this and then you can dress it up for dinner if you want. But you could also wear the kind of shorts. I brought three pairs of shorts and I thought that was plenty. You can bring any type of wick dry kind of material that's good because you will get wet quite often. Um, Actually, I brought a fourth pair of shorts, these really dressy ones with this cute dressy top. I haven't worn it. Uh, like I said, the boat's air conditioned and there's not that much downtime that everyone's like laying out on the top deck. So I don't think I needed to bring as many cute outfits as I, as I was thinking I needed. 
Uh uh. These pants, I haven't worn them. <laughs> they're like flat pants. I've had them since high school. So yeah, they're not very stylish. But I was thinking, oh, I could dress them up or I could hike in them if I want. I haven't worn them. <laughs> I've pretty much worn these, worn a pair of shorts every single day. And then when it's been pretty sunny or chilly, I've thrown on these over them. And again, it's very chill. You don't have to worry about, oh, I wore this shirt already. Like everyone is just interested in the animals and sightseeing and things like that. In terms of sun protection, it's also smart to have some kind of hat. And I didn't bring it, but I do have it, a buff. A lot of the crew and the guides around here all have the buff that they put around their face and their neck to protect from the sun. It also can get a little bit sandy. So personally, I always bring my buff for cold weather trips, but it would have been really helpful on this trip. In terms of electronics, yours could look totally different. The main thing I've been using is the device that we're recording with, and I'm gonna have my fiance just spin around, show you in the mirror. So this little fuzzy microphone and this steady box, <laughs> has been invaluable. We've used it for everything and then just my iPhone. So I'll link these in the description of the video. And we bought, the microphone came with a short cord to attach to the phone, but we've really liked this long cord because the, just come back this way. If you are trying to make any type of videos with audio, the islands are crazy windy. So I actually have the windsock over the mic and then the dead cat over it too. Really, 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 really windy. So keep that in mind. And the long cord we like, because if we need to kind of hold it closer to us, it's a little bit easier than the cord that the microphone came with. Many, many gadgets, but most people won't need all of these gadgets. Uh, one thing I'll say, you know, I have two gimbals, one for the phone, one for the GoPro. I haven't used these much. I've used these personally to record some videos for my blog, but I think for most people, it's not super, super necessary. Maybe you have one gimbal if you want, but the steady box, I don't know what it's actually called, that my fiance is currently using to record is what we've mainly been using. But gimbals give that nice kind of flow look without any shake. It is nice if you want to bring one. You could bring a power bank. We haven't used it because again, you're coming back to the ship so often and something really neat is they have U.S. plugs. In Ecuador, they use the same plugs as in the U.S. So if you're like us and you're from the U.S., that's great. And on our ship, they also have um, another type of plug. I actually don't know what this is. But anyway, and there's USB plugs as well. One gadget, whether you are a photographer or not, that you will absolutely want to have, everyone on the trip who didn't have one was really upset, is some kind of action camera. I have a GoPro, but it doesn't need to be GoPro. Just some kind of action camera that can go underwater. We today, like I said, we were swimming with sea lions and penguins, tons of beautiful starfish, schools of yellow-tailed sturgeon. We saw sharks. You're gonna wanna be able to get this all on video or take pictures. So yeah, I would have been really sad if I didn't have my GoPro. The head strap, my fiance and I both had GoPros. We didn't use them, but what I've just done is, you know, kind of go like that so it's on my wrist but you can also get the stick that's a great thing to have just something that you can hold it and make sure it's wrapped around your wrist in case you drop it or something like that I like to always carry this if you have a DSLR camera and you get a little bit of something in there that's showing on the lens I like to just blow it out of course any chargers I haven't I'm not displaying all my chargers but yeah chargers in terms of lenses if you have a DSLR I bought this last minute and I would be crying if I hadn't. Bring a telephoto lens, even if you have to rent it. You're gonna be bird watching. You're gonna see penguins from afar. You're gonna see sea lions. The first day we saw turtles, sea turtles popping their heads out of the water. I think I'm the only one on the group, in the group with a telephoto lens. And I'm the only one who was really able to get close up shots of the turtle's face. So if you only bring one lens, make sure it's a telephoto lens in the Galapagos. I also have this lens, 24 to 70, I like this for landscapes. This is the lens that I use for most things in general, photo taking life. I own a photo tour company in New York City. I shoot a lot of photos of people. I'm usually using this lens. And then this lens, I've only just really used it for food, a 50 millimeter. It's a really nice lens, I think for this trip, 
not super necessary because I'm not wanting to change my lenses every single second on these islands where there's no cover, it's super windy, there's sand blowing around, there's volcanic rock everywhere. So I'm trying to minimize the amount of times I'm changing my lenses. So those two I think are just perfect, but you know, I'm just using this for food, changing it in the room before we eat. What's really nice about the cruise, you don't need to bring a purse or anything. It's just pay at the end. Definitely want to bring a backpack. I would bring a waterproof backpack because you're going to be on these pangas, you're going to have your gear in there. So anything waterproof is always good. The cruise, at least our cruise, check with your own, has supplied the wetsuits, the snorkeling gear, any real gear that we needed, they've supplied. And then I just want to show you, let's go in the bathroom really quick. I brought tons of toiletries, super unnecessary. This ship has had really nice toiletries, these really big bottles and everything, the shampoo, the conditioner, um, a big shower gel, really nice soaps, and a really big bottle of really nice lotion um, was included, and these products are great. But you will want probably a razor. I personally like to just bring my own facial bar or some kind of face soap. And um, facial moisturizer I think is invaluable, comb, any medications. Something you might not think of is lip uh, balm with SPF, which I haven't been wearing. I've been wearing my other one and then I realized, oh, I have one with SPF and I should have been wearing this all the time. Because it is really, really strong sun here. <laughs> which also leads me to sunscreen. You are gonna want to reapply this at least three times a day. Even if you don't think you need to, we have all been getting sunburned and I've been, I've been putting this sunscreen on nonstop. So yeah, just a few things to think about and then any of your normal stuff. I brought a teeny bit of makeup for these videos. Super unnecessary unless, you know, you're a content creator and you want to create videos or maybe have a little makeup on for photos on the ship. You are absolutely not going to need makeup off the ship or maybe you want to put a little bit on for dinner. But I just brought mascara and concealer. It's not, you really don't need makeup. You're going to be getting sun kissed anyway. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. We found packing for this trip to be really confusing. It took us so long just because we had no idea what to expect. So I thought creating this would be helpful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments of this video. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified when future travel videos publish.